Okay, hi colleagues. Uh, my name is Adrian. Also, we have today Sasha. Uh, I am engineering manager from Mirantis, and Sasha is senior deployment engineer. Uh, we would like uh, today to share with you our experience, uh, uh, how we made the SDN solutions with uh, Fuel Open, uh, Mirantis OpenStack and Fuel. So uh, today's our agenda will cover the next questions: uh, how, fuel, how fuel plugins works uh, and how they will help to building Contrail plus OpenStack clouds. Uh, any features with Contrail and OpenStack, and also we'll provide a demo uh, how it was with, done by us. Uh, so let me quickly share, explain uh, fuel Contrail plugin description. Uh, Fuel Country plugin provides a uh, possibility to deploy Mirantis OpenStack with Juniper Control SDN as a network backend. Um, plugin versions uh, that currently will be shown today uh, supports Fuel 7.0, uh, Mirantis OpenStack Kilo, and Juniper Control 3.0. Uh, actually, this plugin automates deployment of Contrail controller nodes, uh, providing uh, settings for Contrail services, adjusting uh, con configuration of OpenStack components. Um, I'll give a word to Sasha. Sasha will more uh, deeply technical explain how it works. Thank you, Andrew. So basically, I would like to start with um, some description of field plugins and how can they be used to customize OpenStack deployments with Fuel. So basically, plugins are uh, some additional software packages uh, that can be installed on Fuel master node, and uh, they can add customizations and new capabilities to environments which are uh, built with Fuel. Mm, technically, the inside there are actually RPM packages there which can be installed all or upgraded or deleted from master node. Um, Inside this RPM package, you can find um, a package repository of packages that can be brought into the environment with plugin. Also, then you can find some metadata um, about the plugin, some uh, UI settings for the plugin, and its main part is deployment tasks. Uh, basically, most plugins' deployment tasks are written in Puppet. Mm, and they work um, just as a uh, deployment task in Fuel Core Library works. So plugins allow um, to inject uh, the plugin tasks uh, into the um, deployment flow of Fuel. So uh, Fuel offers open source framework for creating new plugins. Uh, and it provides uh, UI integration for plugin settings. So if you install a plugin, you can see a tab with plugin settings in settings tab on Fuel. Um, also, um, Fuel provides uh, tools to develop, build, and test plugins. Um, so basically, uh, starting from Fuel 7.0, uh, there are some new features in plugin frameworks that uh, helped us very much to um, build a fuel control plugin. Um, main feature for us was uh, an ability to define a new node uh, via new node role via plugin. So basically, it's a new kind of um, server role deployed with um, fuel. Another f feature is um, ability to allocate. A custom highly available VAP, which uses the same fuel HA possibilities um, which are used for another um, OpenStack VAPs. And third feature, which was very useful for us, uh, was plugin defined disk partition. So, using the plugin metadata, we can define um, separate uh, disk partition, which can be used for the features that plugin provides. Um, so, let's uh, come to high-level overview of logical architecture of the environment built with uh, Fuel and Contrail plugin. Um, and these boxes, uh, green ones, uh, are the nodes which are deployed by basic Fuel installation. Uh, blue boxes are the items that are added by plugin or configured by plugin. Um, so. I will start, for example, I think with a networking part. Um, Fuel provides um, a private network for Newton communication, so Fuel Contrail plugin uses it as an IP fabric for Contrail. So here you can see um, 
some arrows that show you the communications between Utron, HA proxy, and Contrail API Web UI. So here you can see three new node roles that are added to environment. They are Contrail database node, uh, Contrail config node, and Contrail control node. Um, further, I will describe more in depth uh, what changes plugin introduces on each kind of node. So let us start. Mm. Uh, let us start with ControlDB node. ControlDB is a custom role which is introduced by plugin, and um, plugin tasks uh, deploy such software components as Cassandra. Um, we use a package recommended by Juniper and configurations uh, that are recommended for Juniper. Also, it, ins it installs Zookeeper and Kafka. Um, please note that we use custom partitioning scheme for uh, control DB nodes to ensure that we have enough space for uh, Cassandra database files. So uh, the minimum size is uh, 200 and um, 56 gigabytes, so if you do not have such uh, disk space on the node, you can not start the deployment. Um, so next node role is Contrail Config node. Um, this role covers uh, three uh, Contrail components. So first component is Contrail uh, Config which includes uh, discovery service, API servers, scheme transformer, and device manager. Um, also, uh, on this node role is installed Contrail Analytics, which include collector, analytics API, uh, query engine. Mm. Also, we install Contrail Web UI with its web server and mid middleware services um, on this kind of node. So, uh, you know, you can um, combine this node with database node on the same server, but it is recommended to have odd number of nodes to have high viability. Mm. Let's come to Contrail Control node. Here we installed such components as Contrail Control and Contrail DNS and provide configuration for them. Also, I would like to mention that um, uh, Field Control plugin uses uh, custom VAPs for providing VAPs for um, uh, all control endpoints. So now it is possible to distribute uh, all of the control node roles across different L2 segments to achieve high viability or uh, resiliency. Um, I will um, describe more uh, when we will go to OpenStack uh, controller node. So. What actions are taken by Fuel plugin uh, for control task on OpenStack controller nodes? Mm. And introduce the following changes. Uh, of course, it installs a core neutron a plugin for control to let us use control as networking backend. Also, it configures the HA proxy frontend in the private network for uh, RabbitMQ service, uh, which is used by Contrail. So we don't uh, use RabbitMQ service on um, Contrail database host, but we use the same RabbitMQ as uh, OpenStack Nova uses. Um, the next task for plugging on uh, controller nodes are creating HE proxy configuration for Contrail Web UI and API in public network. So Contrail Web UI and API are available on, under the same IP address as Horizon is. Also, we support uh, SSL. So if you uh, enable SSL in Fuel and you have your uh, certificate for public endpoints, so this certificate can be used for Contrail Web UI. Um, also, uh, we use a, a custom VAP feature uh, from plugin framework to allocate an additional VIP um, and run HA proxy for um, endpoints of control services like uh, discovery and API. Um, also, uh, plugin installs some additional packages for control specific heat templates uh, for search chaining and adds some control accelerometer plugin to count some, metrics, some control specific metrics by accelerometer. Um, on compute nodes, hmm, we have the following tasks. Uh, first, we update the Nova configuration file hmm, to make sure that we are using Neutron and we are using proper Neutron points and Keystone points. 
Also, we remove OpenVSV switch packages and OpenV switch kernel modules uh, because we cannot use uh, the same bridge for vhost and for OpenV switch. Um, but we configure the private network interface to be used with uh, control vehicles. So uh, we create, um, first we move it out of private bridge, uh, create a configuration for vhost zero interface. Um, also, we uh, uh, configure IP tables to allow tra incoming and outgoing traffic for control ports. Um, the main task for compute now is to install the router and the router agent. Uh, along with the router, the KMS uh, kernel modules. And we provide uh, proper configuration files for the router agent when we where we specify uh, the IP addresses and interface names um, uh, for the router. Um, so basically, starting from plugin version 3.0, we enable uh, some control and a few specific features uh, to achieve high network performance. They are SRAOV and DPDK. Uh, let me give some insights on how a uh, plugin enables SRAOV for environments. So uh, we have also custom uh, node role which has name SRAOV compute, which can be applied to the host which you want to act as SRAOV enabled host. If this role is assigned at the host, um, you will have SRAV enabled on all cap SRAV capable interfaces, uh, but which are not assigned to existing fuel network groups and are not bond slaves to ensure that um, you have a dedicated SRAV interface. Also, plugin updates are uh, bootloader with uh, custom kernel settings like Intel IOMMU uh, to let SRAV function. Also, plugin scripts are uh, created at least in device entry on Nova Compute uh, to let Nova know that it can use uh, these devices. And also, we configure a Nova scheduler on controller nodes uh, to add the SRAV filter, um, PCI pass through filter. What comes to DPDK, um, by default, a uh, control virtual router runs as a kernel module. Um, to get more optimal performance for NFE, the plugin scripts can install and configure user space router instead of kernel WA. To get this installed, you need to enable uh, DPDK globally in plugin settings and assign a custom DPDK compute role to the host. But first to run user space uh, router, we need some to do some prerequisites. Uh, they include setting up huge pages on compute host and creating a custom flavor with huge pages enabled. Uh, also, a host aggregate is created which includes our DPDK enabled computes to um, let us to let uh, the user run uh, the DPDK enabled VM only on the host that uh, support DPDK. Also, we add some configuration for CPU pin for the router process to uh, supply the number of cores it can use. Um, also, we uh, provide some uh, patching for Nova to support user space the router because user space the router is not out of the box in Fuel 7.0. I hope this will be um, included in next releases. And also, we have an option, toggable one, to install QMU and libvirt from Contrail uh, repository, because uh, packages from MOS also do not support um, huge pages and user space for router, but uh, you can enable installation of these packages uh, from Contrail repository. Um, now I will show you a demo how uh, you can create an environment with a uh, fuel plugin enabled and uh, also we will show some basic control operations uh, on the deployed environment. So hold on a second, I will start the video. Oops. Okay, so let us start. We have here in our folder uh, control uh, plugin package and control, control install uh, packages. So first step is to uh, copy these packages to fuel master node. 
I see that they are being copied. Mm. Next step will be to install a uh, field control plugin on master node. Let's wait for the packages to be copied, okay? So we SSH to fill master node. Verify that we do not have any plugins installed yet. Here we go. No plugins. Let's install fill control plugin. Isn't the fill plugins a dash dash install uh, comment? Here we go. Okay. So let's check if the plugin was installed successfully. And issue fill plugins at least one more time. Okay. So we have control here. Mm, so the next step is to um, unpack the control install packages, uh, file and populate the local repository, which uh, contains uh, all the control packages. So this, this repository will be available from master node. So first we copy uh, the packages to the plugin folder on master node. And run the install sage script, which unpacks uh, the package and creates the repository indexes. This makes this can take some time. Almost done. So after the index file was created, uh, each of the slave nodes can install packages from this repository. Okay, we are good. So next step is to create a new uh, OpenStack environment uh, in Fuel. So let's switch to browser window and um, enter the fuel web UI. Let's create a new environment, give it some name, for example, Contrail, um, select the proper hypervisor, in our case it's KVM, and select uh, the networking. In our case, this is um, neutron with tunnel and segmentation. Also, we can adjust some additional options for the environment. Okay, so our environment is created now, so let's check for the plugins. Hmm, here we go. So here we can enable the field control plugin and provide settings for this plugin. For example, huge pages, um, size, amount, uh, CPU pin in a mask for the router, uh, and toggle whether we need to patch uh, Nova and install custom, custom QM packages. So the next step for us is to configure the networking for our environment. So we start with uh, setting up an IP addresses for um, public network, the gateway for pu public network, the IP ranges for uh, public network, and uh, all other IP addresses which can conform to our lab environment. Here we said the IP address is for private network, which will be used as Contrail IP Fabric. Mm. After we have saved the settings, um, we can start adding the nodes. As you can see here, uh, we have custom node roles here, like SRAV Compute, DPDK Compute, Contrail Config, uh, Contrail Control, and Contrail DB. All these roles are added with plugin. So let's now add roles to our nodes to our environment and assign roles for them. We set up three OpenStack controllers here. And add a 
a node with all three roles, uh, control DB, control control, and control configure. Also, we can add a, a usual compute with storage and one compute host with SRAV and DPDK capabilities. This is this uh, hardware server. After we have added all hosts, we can configure the network interfaces for these hosts. Excluding this one compute, so we can click the button configure interfaces and drag and drop our networks on the designated uh, network interface cards. The network settings are common for, the, uh, for all nodes that uh, we have added in this group. Now we can configure the networking for a hardware compute. Which has a different number of network cards and different layout of networks in them. So after we have saved the changes, uh, we can verify all network settings check the range for private network and verify that our uh, BGP gateway IP address uh, is on the same network. After we're done with network configuration, we um, can uh, verify networks. Uh, Phil uses this feature to verify if the all network cards are configured uh, with the same network segments, if we do not have any ROG DSPR servers and so on. So after our um, network configuration uh, checker succeeded, we can uh, come to actually deploying the environment. So deploying the environment takes some time, so we have skipped it, and I think we can start with our view of the deploy environment. So as you see, our nodes are in ready state, and we can proceed to Horizon. Mm, let's copy the IP address of Horizon to access on the control web UI on the port 8143. Uh, login with default credentials. So here you see status dashboard. You can see that we have two virtual routers and two computes. Uh, we have uh, one control node running one analytics node running, one config node running, and we have a database node. So let's check their status. Verify that they're up and running, and verify that uh, our BGP peers are okay here. Good, so let's log into Horizon and create our first instance. This will be a regular instance. So we select um, parameters like availability zone, it is Nova, without huge pages. Mm. I use the default uh, test VM series image and connect this instance to uh, uh, network net 4 x As you see, our instance is booting. Okay, it's, it is running, so let's uh, use this IP address to enter the instance and verify the networking. We can pin this IP address or SSH to it. Our environment uses a BGP router, so we may obtain external connectivity like pinning, for example, Google DNS. Okay, so now let's um, do some more advanced thing like creating a SRAV enabled instance. So first step is to create uh, a neutral network with uh, provider network with net one and specify some segmentation ID for it and give it a name, for example, SRAV demo net. Now we can create 
any subnet for this network. Uh, okay, it's done. So now we can create some SRAV enabled ports in Neutron. For example, we can create a port uh, in this SRAV uh, demo network and specify the binning for the port. Nick type direct. And also we add a regular port to this instance for this network. So now we can uh, spawn an instance with these ports. So we can speci we specify the flavor with huge pages. Uh, the image Ubuntu because in SARS we do not have uh, the drivers for uh, virtual functions. And we specify Tunix uh, support IDs first is uh, reg regular port and other is uh, 3V port. Here we go. Also, we specify a key part to let us to SSH to this instance. Okay, now our instance is booting, and we can enter this instance via SSH. We use a previously created keeper and IP addresses for this instance. Okay, so now let's uh, check the LSPCI command for virtual functions. So as you see here, uh, we have an Ethernet card, which is uh, Intel i 350 Ethernet controller virtual function. Now let's uh, do some DPDK. So let's create two instances uh, in huge pages availability zone um, and specify the image uh, with uh, DPDK PKT again to, to verify that our DPDK is working and it has su sufficient performance. Let's wait for the instances to boot. Now we can enter the consoles for the instances and verify the configuration of DPDK picket again. So as you see, here is uh, specified the SRC and DSD um, IP addresses and MAC addresses. Now we can start the uh, picket again program. On first note, and let's do the same on the second note. Doing the same, so refine the configuration and start in the DPDK kit again. So please be patient and it may take some time, I think around 30 seconds to let the traffic flow start. So we have 10 gigabit links here. And some seconds, we will see the traffic flow.
there we go mm, now we have around more than six and about seven gigabits of traffic and mm -hmm. around more than one million two million of 64 byte packets are flowing from one instance with the PDK enabled to another. So that's it for the demo. I think we have some slides left. So what are our plans for future? So uh, we are going to um, develop the f new field version and uh, new OpenStack version with new control releases. So also we are going to do some VMware with center integration with Contrail, and we are going to um, implement GSN node support for bare metal servers uh, in uh, Contrail. Here you can find some useful links. Uh, first link is about is a wiki page on OpenStack about field plugins, so you can find more information how to build your own plugins, uh, more information how to test them. Uh, also, here's a link to Mirantis plugin catalog where you can see all plugins, partner plugins and validated plugins uh, from Mirantis. And the last link is a, a direct link to um, GitHub repository of field control plugin on GitHub. Uh, so I think that's it. Mm, questions? No questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.